We are, or should I say we remain, in a time of seemingly limitless whitewashing by Hollywood. It is a terrible time to be an American actor of color, particularly an Asian American actor. And let's just be honest guys, there's never really been a good time. I could take you back to the 1930s and we could talk about The Good Earth, which was a movie with Chinese characters played by white people. Or we could look at Mickey Rooney's cringe-inducing portrayal of an Asian man at breakfast in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Or we could fast forward to last year and the casting of Emma Stone as a Chinese Hawaiian character in Cameron Crowe's Aloha. Or we could go this year for Disney and Marvel's casting of Tilda Swinton as a Tibetan character. Guys, Tilda Swinton is not Tibetan, just FYI in case you were curious. Um, but let's not leave out DreamWork and, DreamWorks and Paramount, you know, I'm just gonna bash everybody here, who cast Scarlett Johansson as a Japanese character, complete with CGI effects to make the very white Scarlett look more Asian. Hashtag yellow face. Last year, as the population of Asian Americans increased, our representation on screen decreased. The only racial group for whom that was reported as happening. And <laughs> yes, he's, he's shocked about this. Um, so, and if you think that the reason that that happens is because American audiences are just so racist, they can't bear it if their films have people of color in them, you're wrong. Every legitimate study, and I'm talking about study after study after study, has shown that diverse content does better. It makes far more money than non-diverse content. So, what's going on? Well, one New York Times journalist, I think, put it very, very well a couple of months ago, and he said, look guys, economics has nothing to do with racist casting policies. Films in which the leads have been whitewashed have all failed mightily at the box office. Inserting white leads had no demonstrable effect on increasing audience numbers. So why is that still conventional thinking in Hollywood? Why? Hashtag racism. So what are our peers doing about this? What are, pe are people doing anything? Well, we look around. So some people are taking the very academic approach. You know, they're getting very analytical. They're crunching the numbers. They're doing surveys and samplings. They're doing discussions and forum groups and lectures and they're talking and talking and talking some more. Some of them are crying and complaining. There's a bunch of gnashing of the teeth and pulling up the hair. Why won't they cast me? Why won't they buy my script? Why won't they pick up my pilot? Why, why, why? And then there's the groveling, the groveling at the feet of racist Hollywood. Oh, thank you, Massa, thank you. Thank you for role of Vietnamese manicures, number 783, thank you. Oh, you'd like me to do an Asian accent? Sure, no problem. Especially since there's no such thing as an Asian accent, so I can just make it up. Yeah. Well, I for one am sick of the talking, which is good for you guys, because you know I'm going to stop soon. I am sick of the crying and complaining, and I'm really, really sick of the groveling. And that is why I'm here. That's why you guys are here. That's why the Film Lab is here. Because we create and produce our own content. And we encourage our filmmakers to create and produce their own content. Content that is innovative, content that is bold, and content that is, wait for it, diverse. Through the shootout and with our amazing sponsors, we provide platforms for our filmmakers to exhibit and disseminate that content to a wide range of audiences, not just one homogenous ethnic group, to all audiences. So when you guys make your shootout films, you don't just empower yourselves, you empower all of us. And by us, I don't just mean Asian Americans, I mean Latinos, I mean Blacks, I mean LGBT, I mean women, I mean all of us. So, you know, uh, I think it was Alex Morgan, U.S. women's national soccer player Alex Morgan, who coincidentally is involved in a wage discrimination suit right now, just asking for some equal pay for equal work, just asking. But she said it's all about learning to create your own success. And that is what you guys are doing. Because you know that if you wait for racist Hollywood, you'll be waiting a very, 
very long time. You know the saying, if you can't beat them, join them? <laughs> the economics show we can beat them. The changing face of the entertainment media landscape shows we can beat them. And the rise of diverse America, certain presidential candidates notwithstanding, shows that we will beat them. So guys, fuck racist Hollywood. We will make our own content, we will support other diverse content, and we will not support content from Hollywood in which the faces, voices, and stories of people of color are whitewashed out of existence. <laughs> you know, somebody said to me yesterday, she said, well, you know, I don't want to complain about the whitewashing too much because I don't want to offend anybody. Offend anybody. What about the offense to you when racist Hollywood erases your face, your voice, your story? So go on. You guys are here. That means you've got the balls. You've got the power, you've got the passion, and you've got the talent. This year, don't just beat them at their own game. Eviscerate them. Leave them, as it were, in a cloud of your cinematic dust. Good luck.